What's up everybody, Jack here, and today I'm gonna to share with you four major lessons that I've learned about online income over the past four years. First, let me clarify what I mean by online income. I'm talking about using a computer and earning money from it. This means that if you have a job and you're working remotely, it's a kind of online income. If you're entrepreneurial and you have your business and you're doing whatever and you're using a computer to do it, there are, yeah, it's, it's online income. Online income is being able to view a laptop as a device that earns you money. That's it. There's a lot of different ways to do that, right? But that, that, that's, that's the basic gist of it. That's the definition. And there's your context for the rest of this video, okay? So the first thing, the first major lesson I learned is the demographic of most of the people I've interacted with. I'm not saying this is true in all cases what I'm about to tell you. I'm just sharing what my worldview is based on my experience over the past four years um, and what my life has been like and all the things that have happened and my reflections and all the people that I've met and talked to. There's some patterns that are really interesting because a lot of them completely contradict what I would expect. And that is true in this demographic. So. I would expect that most people who are interested in online income and pursuing it successfully to some degree would be younger because they're more technologically literate, right? Um, but from my experience, that isn't actually true. There's two major motivators for people who end up working seriously in online income, and they are they have children and they need to provide for them or they're trying to retire and they are scared that they won't be able to retire or they know they won't be able to retire. There is loads and loads of people, loads of Americans out there, you watching this video, you might be one of them who feels really nervous about retirement. That is a huge demographic of people, right? And I actually don't really work with people my own age that much. However, let me make a distinction here because there are a lot of young people who are interested right? But that's what I'm trying to point out here is that if you, if you look at the people who are actively involved in forms of self-employment, not self-employment, sorry, wrong topic, in forms of online income, a lot of them are older individuals. And two of the most common motivations are have children and scared of not being able to retire. This is my experience, okay? So lesson number two is about the obsession with money, okay? And it's kind of ironic here. A lot of these things I'm gonna to talk to you about here are contradictions. They're like things that you would expect to be one way, but don't appear to actually be that way, in my case, in my worldview, in my reality. Maybe this is different than yours, completely possible. Actually, it's guaranteed to be different than yours, right? So, what's really important to understand is that just getting more money into your life isn't going to fix your problems, okay? And don't get me wrong, it's gonna help. You having more money is going to enable you to do other things. But if you aren't very careful, more money will also escalate whatever weaknesses or negativity you have in your life already. And a lot of the people who really pursue this, like a lot of these really businessy CEO type personalities, they're assholes. They are not fun, happy people to be around. I'm not saying they're all like that, definitely not. But there very much is a type, right? There's a lot of mental issues that we'll get into later, but this obsession with money is one I really want to talk to you about. It's also something you probably don't care at all about. You're like, come on, it doesn't matter. But you should view earning more money as a risk of sorts. Unless you have put yourself in a position where you reflect on your day-to-day -day actions on a regular basis, you're around people who are healthy and you're happy to be around, unless you put yourself in these kind of situations, more money can cause more problems for you. 
And it's actually advantageous to be aware of this and not scale too suddenly. Because most people who are involved in this kind of earning, they have this obsession with constant growth. And the problem with that is that constant growth isn't natural. It's cancer. Nothing good in the world just grows suddenly all the time unless it's just very unusual and is just happening that way. Or it's associated with some intense energy that can bring problems, right? You actually have to learn to, to really be quite patient and avoid a lot of situations. Because as soon as you even start having some kind of public persona, you're going to be regularly contacted by people who are making it seem like they want they, are, they have your best business interests and all that kind of thing. And you're going to find yourself in situations where you have to say either yes to more money, but place yourself in a condition, in a position where you're not going to feel good about yourself anymore. But everyone else is doing that, right? So why not? It's, it's business, right? But it doesn't have to be that way. And a lot of these individuals have this blind obsession with earning more money in a very cancerous way. And it, it's quite interesting because if anything, your ability to utilize computers and earn money from them, there's a correlation between your ability to do that and your comfort losing money. You're, you're going to be more likely to earn money online if you're comfortable with losing thousands of dollars. Like if you're actually a person who can feel comfortable losing that much money, you can think about this and that doesn't be like make you go like, well, why the hell would I do that? Why would I, I want to earn money? Why would I lose money? Like, if you feel comfortable with that, that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. I'm not saying you should go out and be reckless and lose money, but there's a correlation. I'm not saying it's a causation. I'm not saying if you go lose money, you're going to make money because that is, there's tons of ways to lose money, loads of ways. But most people hold themselves back so much with the ways that they think. We just get in our way all the time, constantly, every day. It's frustrating, right? And the obsession with money will do that. You want a relationship with money where you view it as something that you can earn more of when you want to and you can earn less of when you need more time. You should view money and free time to live your life, to spend with people, to exist, to be here. You should view free time and money as these things that you can exchange. And most of the time, unless you have specific goals, you should be favoring free time so that you can spend time with people around you and work on things that you give a crap about. That's how you really change your life. You value that part. And maybe you're just watching TV with all your free time. That doesn't mean free time is bad. That just means you're misusing free time by being in the habit of doing something that isn't changing your life. But nowadays, switch that, you know. Maybe watching cable TV and stuff isn't good for you in the long run. But if you're watching a YouTube video every day of something related to what you're interested in, that has long-term positive effects on your life and it changes things. It gives you information. It changes your mentality. And like I said earlier, it always boils down to mentality and it sucks because nobody wants to listen to the crap about mentality, right? Don't obsess about money. Money is something in the life. But it's just one part of it. And if you fail to understand that, you will find yourself in a situation where you got mo money and you got mo problems and you're not any happier than wherever you are right now. So seriously, don't obsess about earning money. If you're going to obsess about something, obsess about learning, obsess about watching content about whatever it is you're interested in. 
that's the kind of stuff, okay, yeah, if if you're neglecting people you care about and friends and you're not cleaning because you're watching videos and learning stuff, okay, whatever. Not ideal, but you're better off. You'll be okay. You'll figure it out. Eventually, you'll learn how to deal with your inconsistencies, right? Don't focus on the money, guys. All right, number three is depression. So this is something you probably won't agree with, um, but I believe that most of the people, the default state for humans on this earth, kind of, is to be depressed. Um, most of the people I know who struggle with depression, so to speak, view it as like, oh, there's something wrong with them. Um, I fundamentally don't believe that. I, I believe that most people on this earth, most humans, are uh, dealing with some level of depression. And the reality is most people aren't truthful. They don't share what they're actually going through with anybody except the people who are very closest to them. They hold a lot of secrets. And this is kind of the default of most people. So there's some fundamental problems that this causes. And it's kind of related to the previous point about money, where you may think that if you have exactly what you want right now, that you're going to be able to be happy. But it's quite likely that your understanding of what makes you happy isn't right. So it's probable, it's, it's likely, quite likely, that when you change your life and you get this thing, this kind of lifestyle that you wanted, you may not feel the way that you expected you would feel. You can find yourself in situations where you have exactly what you want, but it doesn't feel like it matters and it doesn't feel like anything's different. This kind of stuff will happen to you. And it, it does happen regularly, okay? I'm sharing this with you because I, I want you to understand that you can't really just focus on earning money from computers. You, you really have to put a lot, maybe more effort, into reflecting into yourself and understanding the things that motivate you. And how can you pursue things that make you feel passionate and interested in the world? Because this is what will make you stand out from most of the rest of the world, who again are quite depressed people. I'm not saying everyone's like that, and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just telling you, this is the worldview. These are the four things that have fundamentally changed with my perceptions over the past four years regarding online income. Take your mental health seriously. It's important. And just because you're earning more money, and just because you're your own employed person, don't expect that to just fix everything. It's really convenient to think that if you just earned X dollars a month, you wouldn't have the problems you do. Uh, but ultimately, in most cases, you fix the problems by being good to yourself, reflecting and learning to love yourself and change your environments to change who you are becoming. That's what works. And if you get stuck in the same environment, you can't expect a different mentality. You can't expect a different outcome. You got to change it. You got to change your environment. Sometimes that's the only way to get yourself out of the situation that you're in. Most people aren't willing to do that. But it's usually the answer. Okay? All right. So now for the final fourth point. And the fourth point is the human contradiction. One of my favorite things that I have unfortunately come to realize about us humans here is... <laughs> it's really nice to think that if we all had just... We just had the answers to our problems that we would fix them. And I, at least, and a lot of people I know, kind of view other people with this fallacy. We think that oh, if this person just knew this, then they would fix their problems that they complain about, right? 
that's not how humans actually work. And that was really hard for me to accept for a very long time. Um, now I understand that some people will use information to fix their problems, but the, the misconception was that I used to think that all the humans were actively seeking information to fix their problems. And all you had to do is just give it to them, right? That's not actually true. Um, most people aren't in the state of mind to fix their problems. So the reality is that anybody, anybody who's like seen a YouTube video, anybody who's done a Google search, anybody who's honestly typed on a keyboard if you can type on a keyboard with internet whether it's a phone or a computer uh, you have a decision to make because you are essentially responsible for your life now you can't actually come into any problem that you can't solve everything in your life has a solution because you have tapped into the ability to find what other humans have done before you on a scale that never existed before. So your reality, whether you choose to accept it or not, is that from that moment on, once you've accessed a computer or a phone, you've used it to connect with the internet once, you are responsible for fixing everything in your life. Nobody else is going to do it for you. But every time you complain about something in your life, you have to understand that's you choosing to complain instead of fix something. Because you live in a time, you have access to every solution, to every problem you will ever face. And even if there isn't a solution yet, you have access to the people who will find it. There is nothing in your life that is out of this responsibility. Most people won't accept that. And that's what's quite interesting. We are this contradiction, so to speak. And it's easier to predict human behavior if you're able to know what the contradictions are. Because then it seems logical. It's like, okay, um, well, normally people do logical things. But if this is true, then it, they don't do the logical thing. They actually perform this way. And then you apply a different logic, right? And then you can guess what people are doing more often and what has motivated them and all these kind of things, right? But that contradiction is a big one, guys. That's in all of us. Don't think of yourself as a person who's going to fix all the problems that you have if you just knew what to do. It's only part of the picture. The rest of life is about knowing what to do, getting yourself to be in the habit of doing it. That's what it all boils down to, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I figured I'd do a ranty, rambly video. I like these four-point videos. They're kind of cool. Tolkien points, right? I'll see you guys next time.